In this lesson, we'll do a little basics overview of statistics. So if you could get out your packet and just be ready to write some definitions first. The first one is the mean, and you've heard of the mean before. It's just the average value. When you add all the data values up and divide by how many there are, you get the mean. The median is the middle number when the data is arranged from least to greatest. Super important that you put at least to greatest. If there are two numbers in the middle, two middle values, then you take their average. The number that's halfway in between will give you the median. To get the mode, that's just the number or the numbers that occur the most frequently. The lower extreme is a fancy way to say the minimum value in a data set. And the upper extreme is the fancy way to say the maximum value in the data set. The lower quartile is a little bit more complicated. To find the lower quartile, you take the median of the lower half of the data set. And to find the upper quartile, you take the median of the upper half of the data set. The range, sorry, the range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum value, so just subtract biggest minus smallest. And then the inner quartile range is the difference between the upper quartiles and the lower quartiles. So similar to the full range, but you're just taking the upper, to upper quartile and subtracting the lower quartile. So here's all in one convenient place if you wanted to pause here and take some of your notes. All right. We're just going to work out a few examples here, just so you can practice with all of these different types of stats. So we're going to get a small data set of these 10 numbers, and I'm going to ask you to find each value, and I'm going to show you just an example of how to do each one. So the first thing I highly recommend that you do is order the data set from least to greatest just because it makes it so much easier to do a lot of problems. So I'm going to start ordering least to greatest, and I'm going to go 4, 4, and you might want to cross off as you go just so you can keep track, 10, 10, there's another 10, so then I'm going to cross those off. 14, 15, 16, 22, and 25. Okay. So if I count the original set, I have 10 numbers, and in my new set, I also have 10 numbers, which is a good sign. Okay, you've done the mean a lot. So to the, for the mean, you just add all your data points. So if we add them all, 4 plus 4, dot, 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 plus 25, we're going to get a sum of 120. The mean, that average, shows us that we take the sum and we divide it by how many value points there are. So there are 10 points here. We're going to do 120 divided by 10, and our mean is 12. Okay. For the median, we're going to look up at our data set. And notice there is an even number, so there's 10 points. So halfway in between is after the fifth point. So when we have two middle values, the 10 and the 14, you take the average of those, or the number that's halfway in between. So in this case, our median is also 12. Our mode, that's the number that occurs the most often. When you list least to greatest, it's pretty obvious that 10 occurs more than anything else. So our mode is 10. The lower extreme, okay, our extremes, what's the most extreme value is the ones on the ends. So the lower extreme is 4, well the upper extreme is 25. Okay. And then the lower quartile and the upper quartile, those may be the new ones. So what we're going to look at here, when we're looking at the lower quartile, we just look at the, the numbers below the median. So 4, 4, 10, 10, and 10. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the median of that data set. So our lower quartile is 10. Our upper quartile, you're going to do the same similar idea, but you just look at the values above the median. So 14, 15, 16, 22, and 25. And we're going to find the median of that, which is 16. Okay. The range, I'm just going to take the biggest value, which is 25 minus the smallest value, which is 4, and my range is 21. 
And then lastly, the interquartile range. A lot of times this is abbreviated IQR, the interquartile range. So from the smallest, the lower quartile, to the biggest, the upper quartile, what's the range of that? So in this case, I'm going to do 16 minus 10, and I'm going to get a value of 6 for my IQR. Okay, it's pretty common to use some of these data points to create a box and whisker plot, so we're going to briefly talk about that, and that will be the end. Okay, so box and whisker plots. A box and whisker looks like these examples on the right here, and if I just draw a little sketch, you might see, um, I'll just draw something similar to A. What's worth noting are the values that occur in a box and whisker point. So the one on the far left, this little dot, that's the lower extreme or the minimum value. So the right here is the upper extreme, that dot, or the maximum value. The bar that occurs in the middle here, that's the median. And then the two other parts that you can notice, the top of the box right here, that's called the box, this blue part, and the edges, those are called the whiskers. So this is the upper quartile, and right down on the lower part of the box, this is the lower quartile. Okay, so those are the five data points that can be seen in a box and whisker summary. So I want you to kind of look at that and see if you can answer these questions. And then I'm going to show the answers, and you can kind of see if you agreed with me or we can discuss more in class if you didn't. Okay, just do a brief check of your answers with mine, see if you agree. For the last three questions, these are quartiles, so it's important to note that they're broken up into quarters, so this is 25% of the data, and each of these regions can consist of approximately 25% of the data. So that's how I'm getting those answers to 6 through 8.